Yahweh administrates our great deliverance? Is he setting us up for success or failure? Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number two of a second time of special Pesach or Passover readings. Let's go to the book of Devrim or De Deuteronomy, if you will, chapter number 15. And let's begin reading with verse number one. At the end of every seven years, you make a release of debts. And this is the word of the release. Every creditor is to release what he has loaned to his neighbor. He does not require of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the release of Yahweh. Of a foreigner, you could require it, but your hand is to release whatever is owed to you by your brother. Only there should be no poor among you. Imagine that. There is to be no poor among us. For Yahweh does greatly bless you in the land which Yahweh your Elohim has given you to possess as an inheritance. Now verse 5 says, Only if you diligently obeyed the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to guard to do all these commands which I am commanding you today. Now, what follows is some of the uh, more rehearsed lines of you will be a, a lender, not a borrower. You will be the, you know, uh, rule over many nations. There's not to be any poor among you. It's an idealistic society situation where everyone has sufficient to their need. Everyone has enough and then some. If you go back a few pages to chapter number 8, same book, Yah says in verse 7, For Yahweh your Elohim is bringing you into a good land, a land of streams of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. A land in which you eat bread without scarcity, in which you do not lack at all. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you dig copper. He says in verse 10, You shall eat and be satisfied, and shall bless Yahweh your Elohim for the good land which he has given to you. Now let's imagine for a moment the recipients of this information. This word is coming to a people who have not even owned themselves, let alone a garden plot or a piece of land or a home. They barely possess their own lives. And now they're being told, you are going to come into a land that is abundant, has plenty of water sources, rain in its right seasons, springs and, and rivers and valleys and hills to get ore from, to, to do your metal work, an abundance of food. You're going to eat and have plenty. They were told you're going to have houses that you did not have to build. You're going to reap from vineyards and groves that you did not plant. Your, your crops are going to come in correctly. Pestilence and scarcity and famine it's not going to hit you only if you obey all the commands of Yah. And again, as we said many times before, none of these commands are too hard for you. Yah's command in chapter 15 here is you who have been delivered. Those that have come out of the bowels of the furnace of Mitzrayim or Egypt. The Pesach lamb has indicated your absolute deliverance. You are no longer a slave. Change your heart, change your mind, change your expectations, and anticipate a different kind of life. Now, for someone who has never had that opportunity, this is grand and glorious news, but it's also a lifestyle to which they are totally unaccustomed. And somehow we have it in our minds, I think, that when the kingdom comes, we're going to make this automatic adjustment and we're going to move out of whatever societal, cultural, 
worldview and perspective that we have now into a kingdom worldview, and it's going to happen instantaneously without any, excuse me, <coughs> any training, any adjustment on our part. Really? We're counting on a lot of things to be fixed at that catching away at the mortality, putting on immortality, uh, the, the, um, the, the change in the moment and the twinkling of an eye that Rob Shul talked about, the corruptible putting on incorruption. We shall be changed instantly. How much in our mind is going to be changed? I don't know. I'm hoping a lot more <laughs> than, than what I can imagine. But here's my point. It says that there is to be no poor among you. If there's going to be an abundance, if the crops are going to work, if the land is going to produce, if every availability of prosperity and success has been made available, why would there even be a chance of poor being among them? Because man is man there are those that if if the entire world and all of its wealth were equally divided between every man woman and child on the earth a complete total redistribution of all the world's wealth it would not take long before those who know what to do with money and how to manage it would rise to the top and those who have no understanding of wealth, money, or its management will again find themselves at the bottom. It's just a state of humanity. The idea that it, we're all equal if just given an equal chance, not necessarily a, a good dose of reality. People splurge and spend what they don't have, and then they end up lacking. People know how to save and invest. And, and use money wisely as a tool and a right vehicle. And they look down the road many steps and they have funds and are able to create money and create wealth and then have to give to others. It's the way it's been since the beginning. So those that are poor among us, the instruction for us is that we were to take care of them. Yah is looking not necessarily for those who have pity on those who lack. He's looking for those who have compassion. There's a great difference between pity and compassion. To pity someone is just to feel sorry for them, uh, to, to be saddened by their plight, but really not do anything other than to offer words of consolation. Well, you poor thing. I'm sorry, you poor thing. That doesn't help. Compassion says, I see your need. How can I meaningfully address your need to where this is not a continuing need? It's the old proverb of teaching someone to fish it enables them to live and eat for a potential long period of time rather than just handing them a fish. So you understand then that Yah is asking to partner with him. Yah looks on our needs, has compassion on our needs, and seeks to deliver us from our need. These people's need was they needed liberty. They needed freedom. They needed life choice. They needed a hope, an expectation, and a future. He set them up to have that. Some were going to waste that opportunity and not take a meaningful advantage of it. Those who knew what to do with that opportunity would rise to the top. Being at the top, having means, having some sense of substance about yourself means that we need to find those who are lacking and have compassion on them. It's not enough just to reach in your pocket and hand somebody a, a few bucks. Yah is asking us, partner with me and see them delivered. You may need to teach them, instruct them, partner with them, walk alongside them to help them to get to a better place. In doing so, 
We partner with the Most High, and then He entrusts us with even more. More on this tomorrow. Then shalom.